This is a question from Hunter, who asks, what if you ignored all the rules of car racing and had a contest which was simply to get a human being around a track 200 times as fast as possible? What strategy would win? Let's say the racer has to survive. So regardless of strategy, it turns out that the best you'll be able to do is about 90 minutes. There are lots of ways you could build your vehicle, an electric car, a rocket sled, or a carriage that runs along a rail like a roller coaster. But in each case, it's pretty easy to develop the design to the point where the human is the weakest part. The problem is acceleration. On the curved parts of the track, drivers will feel powerful g-forces. The Daytona Speedway in Florida has two main curves, and if the vehicles go around them too fast, the drivers will die from the acceleration alone. For extremely brief periods, such as during car accidents, people can experience hundreds of g's and survive. One g is the pull you feel when you're standing on the ground under Earth's gravity. Fighter pilots can experience up to 10 g's during maneuvers, and, perhaps because of that, 10 g's is often used as a rough limit for what people can handle. However, fighter pilots only experience 10 g's very briefly. Our driver would be experiencing them in pulses for minutes and probably hours. There's a good NASA document on the physical effects of acceleration, and the data shows that for periods on the order of an hour, normal humans can only handle three to six Gs of acceleration. If we limit our vehicle to four Gs, its top speed on the turns at Daytona will be about 240 miles per hour. At this speed, the course will take about two hours to complete, which is definitely faster than anyone has driven in an actual car, but not even by an hour. But wait, we forgot about the straightaways. We could accelerate the vehicle up to a higher speed while on straight segments and then decelerate it back down when approaching curves. This would help the car go around the track in less time and conveniently result in a situation where the driver can be kept at a relatively constant magnitude of acceleration through the whole trip. It would be more like experiencing the constant stronger pull of gravity on a heavy planet rather than the jerky acceleration of an overpowered roller coaster. Keep in mind that the direction of the acceleration would keep changing depending on whether the vehicle is going around a curve or speeding up or slowing down. Every direction of acceleration has its particular consequences, but humans can survive acceleration best if they're accelerated in the direction of their chest, like a driver accelerating forward. The body is least capable of being accelerated downward toward the feet, which causes blood to pile up in the head. So to keep our driver alive, we'll need to swivel them around so they're always being pressed against their back. If limited to 4 Gs in this way, our driver will finish the course in a little under an hour and 45 minutes. In comparison, the fastest modern Daytona race cars take about 3 hours to finish the 200 laps. If we raise the limit to 6 Gs, the time drops to an hour and 20 minutes. At 10 Gs continuously, well past human tolerability, it would still take over an hour. It would also involve breaking the sound barrier on the backstretch. So, barring dubious concepts like liquid breathing to counteract the effects of continual exposure to high G-forces, human biology limits us to Daytona finishing times over an hour. But what if we drop the survive requirement? How fast can we get the vehicle to go around the track? Well, let's imagine a vehicle attached with Kevlar straps to a pivot in the center of a similarly sized circular track. In effect, this is a giant centrifuge. This lets us apply one of my favorite weird equations, which says that the edge of a spinning disk can't go faster than the square root of the specific strength of the material it's made of, or it'll tear itself apart. For strong materials like Kevlar, this speed is 1 to 2 kilometers per second. At those speeds, a capsule could conceivably finish the race in about 10 minutes, although definitely not with a living driver inside. Okay, forget the centrifuge. What if we build a chute like a bobsled course and send a ball bearing rocketing down it? Sadly, the disk equation strikes again. The ball bearing can't roll faster than a couple of kilometers per second or it will be spinning too fast and it will also tear itself apart. What if we make it slide? Diamond is one of the toughest materials, so we could imagine a diamond capsule sliding along a smooth diamond chute. Since it doesn't need to rotate, it could potentially survive stronger acceleration than a rolling ball bearing. However, the sliding would result in substantially more friction than the ball bearing example, and our diamond might catch fire. To defeat friction, we could levitate the capsule with magnetic fields and make it progressively smaller and lighter to accelerate and steer it more easily. Oops, we've accidentally built a particle accelerator. And while it doesn't exactly fit the criteria in Hunter's question, a particle accelerator makes for a neat comparison. The particles in the Large Hadron Collider's beam go very close to the speed of light. At that speed, they complete 500 miles in 2.7 milliseconds. Wikipedia lists about 850 motor racing tracks. The LHC beam could run the equivalent of a full Daytona 500 on each of those 850 tracks, one after another, in about two seconds, before the drivers had made it to the first turn. And that's really as fast as you can go.